And our next session is by Basis Technology on how adverse media fits into perpetual know your customers. Sharing with us now is Mr. Chris Brown, VP International from Basis Technology. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as I said, my name is Chris Brown and welcome to uh, my session. Over the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about how adverse media fits into perpetual KYC. Now, for some people, perpetual KYC was something they may have never heard of before. So we're going to go through this presentation to explain what do we mean by that and how it fits into an adverse media within a, a bank, a financial institution. So the first thing I want to talk about, why is it the new buzzword? And some people say, well, I didn't even know it was a buzzword. So we go back in history. So perpetual within a software world is you get a license that lasts forever. KYC is something you do around onboarding and checking that customers are good to do business with or how much are they worth to you. But imagine bringing the two together so it's something you do all the time on a regular basis. So it's a continuous rotation. So I'll ask a few things first, a few statements I'm going to talk about now. And do you think these are acceptable? Because I don't think they are. So a high risk customer is reviewed just once a year. A low risk customer is reviewed once every five years. And I want to talk about that as we go through, but just because someone was a low risk customer five years ago or two years ago, doesn't mean they're not, they're not high risk now. Knowledge of hidden risk in the back book. So that you actually know there's problems in your back book, but do nothing about it. And what's alarmed me lately is I've been talking to a number of banks and they're getting over 99% of false positives. That's scary. So, this is an example. We, we've been talking to a number of banks, but here's one bank, and I'm, I'm obviously not going to say who it is, but this is their profile of what they're doing today. So, during their onboarding, they get about 1 million new customers a year. So, they're doing the KYC, so that's immediate. So, it's coming through part of their onboarding. And then they get into their risk profile, and they typically have around 15% or a high risk, medium 35, low risk 6 to 3.5%. So roughly 15,000 are in high risk and around 350 are in yeah, medium risk. Then you go to the back book. Now they've got 17 million customers, much, much bigger than the onboarding. So they're doing the KY checks and high risk once a year, medium two years, low risk five years. Now, if you apply that methodology across those 17 million customers, it means around 31% of their clients they're doing no checks on. Sorry, only doing checks on 31% of their clients. So nearly 70% of those are not checked for risk. That's very risky. 80% of the low risk customers are not checked and does not does low risk equal no risk. And as I said, you know, because someone was a low risk a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, that does not mean they are they are no longer a low risk. It's a very difficult problem. And also a lot of manual checks. We met some banks, the way they do adverse media is they got one or two people using Google to try and find things and the false positives they get is through the roof. So what I wanna talk about is can artificial intelligence help? And of course, from a technology person, the answer is going to be yes. And we do believe that. It's not just a word. But of course, there's lots of confusion in the marketplace. There's so many different terminologies. Everyone goes, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? So I'd like to just try and clear one thing up around adverse media. So most banks think about this as negative news. And they sort of do go together, but not totally 100%. But it is really looking at bad and negative about a customer or a business from various sources. And the various sources can be a real pain. And then we possibly revealing someone being involved in crime or even more smarter is someone they are linked with that's involved in crime. So maybe this person you've got is just being used as a front person. So we need to really work on that. And of course, coming back to the know your customer, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You can have all these great jigsaws and got great pictures and you get great feeling from putting them together. 
But our frustration is at the end of it, you've got one or two pieces missing. So you don't have a full picture. It's the same with know your customer. If you don't have every piece of information available to you, you don't get a full spectrum of what you know about that client. So you have lots of efforts to verify a customer's identity or their activities, because the data is just so much. Trying to access their risk and liability. Are they stable? Are they loyal? These are all key questions, but very difficult to answer. And then can you make them fit into one anti-money laundering or anti-fraud policy? It is, it is a difficult chance, challenge, but not impossible. So perpetual KYC is really that simple. You eat, you sleep, you check, and most importantly, repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, of course, of all these things, this great technology, you get lots of pain points around variety and volume. So you've got lots of right about data sources. I know some banks have got over 30 to 40 different data sources coming in from different sources, different suppliers. So trying to bring all those together is very difficult, which brings in a vast volume of data. And now we're, we're in a multicultural, multilingual environment. So it's not just English coming through. It's all these different languages. How do you deal with that? And then we've got so many different customers, both in as a person or a business. How do you deal with that? And then the volume, you know, we just saw 17 million. That's not exactly a, a huge bank, but it's still a lot. I know one bank who's getting 22,000 alerts a day and only five investigators. So how do you manage that? And then all these different systems, can you make them work together? And finally, I've talked about this before, the false positives is just going bigger and bigger and bigger. We've got to use smarter technology and smarter processes. So why is adverse media key to a perpetual KYC? Really simple, things are not static. They constantly move. <clears throat> so we've got to move with them. Criminals against smarter, if they find out that they're on a watch list, <clears throat> they could use somebody else who's not on a watch list. Hence why I said someone who was a low risk previously may not be low risk now. And of course, we're now in a, in a world of COVID. So we're now doing virtual and digital onboarding. So that becomes even more of a risk to work out. And again, we come back to that. Can artificial intelligence help? And of course, we always say yes, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. So I don't like the word promise, but I'll talk about this. What if I told you using technology to review your entire customer base, monthly, weekly, even daily if you want to do, to find real risk in adverse media coverage? And it would only service real risk to the bank because there's no point getting all these alerts coming through if they are not relevant. But would you believe me? I know it sounds great, but would you really believe me? You should, because banks are doing this now, not just with us, with many corporations. So here's an example of what I call a perpetual workflow process of a perpetual KYC. So you've got the normal back office that's linked to your high risk file file. Then you're going through your workflow. Now, not everyone will have these next, next sections. So you've got your adverse media data provider. You then got your biometrics data coming through. Some may have open source intelligence. So it's gathering data from the, from the World Wide Web. Not everyone does that, but it's a great tool to use. Then you throw into the artificial intelligence or natural language processing. This is a tool that reads text written by human being. And you link that to your bank's risk policy. Then you go through the workflow back to the back office and the whole process starts again. Now, if you do this and you do it well, you'll get, you'll get to rewards. So there's an example of a search using uh, an organization that were using their adverse media without artificial intelligence. They got just on one search, 498 articles. Someone's gonna go through all those and work out which of those are a problem? By bringing artificial intelligence and actually keying things in that will make things work better, you can do smarter things. You can actually surface things. Oh, that's important to me. Then start to build filters and go, oh, I want to repeat that filter over and over and over and over again. And that's how you get really smarter. So, and they can do this across lingual as well. So you can even put in search strings in English and find things that's relevant in Chinese. 
or in Arabic or Russian without actually knowing that and still get the ability to filter to things that's only relevant to what you need and what's important to you, okay? And of course, going back to what I said before, across the wide variety of data. So, we're getting very close to the end. I'm, I'm probably a little bit ahead, because I'm getting so excited about this. This is a great time to be in the financial services, because technology is catching up. We're getting, we're getting smarter, we're getting ahead of the, the criminals. So, question to you all, is adverse media monitoring for perpetual KYC, is it hype or is it hope? Hopefully it's not the latter. But you want to know more? Comes to basis technology. We're in the startup area in Sentosa. As I said, my name is Chris Brown, but we have a team of waiting to talk to you. I look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you all very much for your time. And have a great day.